Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where J.D. Vance made a joke about sleeping with... Sorry, sleeping on a couch, this is Ballot. That's right. And I just looked up uncancelable in the dictionary, and there's a picture of Donald Trump. Buckle up, let's hit this. So picture this. Trump's at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention, which somehow both sides thought was a good idea. When asked about Vice President Kamala Harris, Trump launched into a monologue that was about as coherent as a game of telephone played by drunk parrots. He claimed Harris happened to turn black and was only promoting Indian heritage before. Trump then posed the philosophical question, is she Indian or is she black? Well, Donald, here's a wild concept. She can be both. I know, I know, it's shocking. Next thing you know, we'll discover that people can be more than one thing at a time. Mind-blowing, right? Someone could be married and be a sofa-sexual. It happens. Don't put everyone in a box, Donald. When the journalist, Rachel Scott, tried to clarify that Harris has always identified as a black woman, Trump accused her of having a hostile and nasty tone. Because nothing says, I'm comfortable with this topic. Like accusing your interviewer of hostility when they state a fact. Meanwhile, Democrats are reacting to Trump's comments like they've just watched a car crash in slow motion. Senator Raphael Warnock called it the politics of insult, of revenge and resentment and retribution. That's a lot of our words, Senator. Are you sure you're not trying to audition for Sesame Street? Earlier in the week, in an interview with Fox News' Laura Ingram, Trump said world leaders would treat Vice President Kamala Harris like a play toy if she's elected president. She'll be so easy for them. She'll be like a play toy. They look at her and they say, we can't believe we got so lucky. They're going to walk all over her. Looking directly into the camera, Trump said, I don't want to say as to why, but a lot of people understand it. Time out. Can I tell you the weirdest part of my job? I'm supposed to take serious news stories and goof on them. We haven't had a serious news story all week. Speaking of which, we have more on today's episode of Politicians Say the Darndest Things. Next up, none other than Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who's been caught in a bizarre love triangle with himself and a couch. Just when we thought this sofa saga was finally over, Vance decided to resurrect it himself at a rally. He joked about potentially sleeping on the couch if he made his wife speak on stage. Now, I'm no relationship expert, but if your go-to punchline involves furniture infidelity, you might want to rethink your material. The crowd's reaction was about as enthusiastic as a group of teenagers at a library. But the internet? Oh, they had a field day. One user quipped, a reminder that J.D. Vance hasn't publicly denied the couch allegations. It seems the viral rumor about J.D. Vance's alleged intimate relationship with a couch wasn't born in a think tank or a political war room, but in the produce aisle of a grocery store. Our anonymous hero, let's call him Grocery Store Rick, claims he was inspired by Hunter S. Thompson's tale of Lyndon B. Johnson spreading rumors about his rival being a, how can I clean this up, a pig enthusiast. Rick says he didn't intend to spread misinformation, he just wanted to mock the Republican candidate. Gather round for another episode of As the Trump Turns, the soap opera that just keeps on giving. Today's drama? A family feud that makes the Hatfields and McCoys look like the Brady Bunch. So here's the scoop. Fred Trump, Donald Trump's nephew, has decided to endorse Vice President Kamala Harris for the 2024 election. Yes, you heard that right. A Trump supporting a Democrat. Fred made his announcement on The View, saying he believes in policy over politics. Now that's a concept as rare in Washington as a politician turning down a free lunch. Now, enter stage right. Eric Trump, looking about as happy as a cat in a bathtub. He took to Twitter, because only crazy people like my ex-girlfriend Norma call it X, to express his, let's call it displeasure. Eric's post reads like a Thanksgiving dinner argument put through a PR firm's spin cycle. He talks about decades of unwavering love, support, golf memberships, family vacations, and millions of dollars in support. Because nothing says family love like a golf membership, am I right? He goes on to accuse Fred of cashing in and following his troubled sister, Mary Trump. Now, I'm no family therapist, but I'm pretty sure airing your dirty laundry on social media isn't in the How to Heal Family Riffs handbook. I'm starting to really like the Harris campaign because reports are that she'll reveal her VP pick on Tuesday in the middle of the day as opposed to, say, 1.46 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon when I'm in the pool. When asked if she's picked her VP, 
Kamala drops a not yet like she's teasing the season finale. Now let's talk about the contenders. We've got a real mixed bag here, folks. Mark Kelly, the astronaut turned senator from Arizona. Tim Waltz, Minnesota's governor, who probably hopes Harris likes lakes and Minnesota nice. Andy Bashir, Kentucky's governor, who might be hoping Harris has a sudden craving for bourbon and horse racing. And of course, Pete Buttigieg, whose name I will eventually learn how to say three years into his presidency someday, who's probably hoping his experience as transportation secretary will help him navigate his way to the VP spot. But the real star of this political soap opera? Josh Shapiro, Pennsylvania's governor. Shapiro's even throwing some shade at Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, saying he's not exactly off to a good start. May the best candidate win, and may the rest get a consolation tote bag or something. Just when you thought the 2024 election couldn't get any more bizarre, along comes Willie Brown with a plot twist that would make even the writers of House of Cards blush. So picture this. It's the 1990s. Kamala Harris is just a bright-eyed lawyer. Donald Trump is just a real estate mogul with a penchant for gold-plated everything. And Willie Brown is playing political matchmaker like it's a game of the dating game Power Edition. According to Brown, he introduced Harris to Trump back when parachute pants were still in style. And not only that, he claims to have photographic evidence of Harris on Trump's plane. That's right, folks. Before they were political rivals, they were... Airplane acquaintances? It's like finding out Batman and the Joker once shared an Uber. And let me just give some free advice here. Trump probably doesn't want anyone Googling Trump and plane in the same sentence. Throw those words into Google, and you get search results that include the word island. Brown also claims he arranged for Trump to write a check for Harris's attorney general campaign in 2011. Talk about a plot twist. It's like finding out Darth Vader once sent Luke Skywalker a good luck on your Jedi training card. Portions of today's show were created with the help of AI, just like the photo of me on Trump's plane.